Welcome back to Naval Action and week 10 of A Letter to the King. For those of you watching the first time, A Letter to the King is my attempt to capture the cut and thrust of PvP on PvP Euro 1. And uh, before we get into what's happened this week, let's remind ourselves where we were as of the end of uh, the last episode. So if you recall, the US had been all but obliterated from the map, pushed back to just a handful of ports, about as bad as it's ever been. Uh, the Brits had made reasonable headway, or had held, I should say, on South Cuba. Not much headway. Um, the Swedes were still holidaying uh, in Brit territory over here. Um, however, the Swedes had made a good push back into the Antilles, um, although there was a lot of fighting with the French going on and they were still biffing to and fro with the Danes. Uh, I think Arves was in French hands at the close of the week. Uh, the Danes and the Brits were pretty quiet across these lines, a little bit of toing and froing. Um, but it's important you kind of remember this map. If you also recall, there was the scurrilous treachery of one of the big British clans that had held the Yucatan for months against uh, all Spanish comers and um, that particular clan um, responsible for this defence turned to the black. Ooh. So, what ensued? Um, I guess something we should remember is that we had the damage mods come out this week. Uh, so, 5 got tweaked to 5.1 to try and fix some of the impenetration issues we had with indestructible armour ships. Um, there were also some fixes to the port timers, um, which I think... Uh, I'm still not sure if it's 100% working, means that once a port's been taken, you can't take it back for three days, or at least that's the intent. Um, so, what happened this week? We'll start off down here in the Antilles. So, the Swedes um, were, I, I think this is probably the best PvP on the server right now, in this neck of the woods, by the way. Um... The Swedes pushed hard into the Danes and into the French and pushed the French out of these main cluster of islands here and really increased their holdings significantly. They pushed the Danes completely away from these holdings. Um, the French squeezed from the north. They managed to take a few ports back off the Dutch, um, pushing the Dutch out and capping these islands around here back from the Dutch. So although the French lost ground to the Swedes in the north, um, they did manage to snaffle up a couple of ports off the Dutch. I have heard that the French did lose a big clan, or a big-ish clan, 20-odd players, active players. Um, I don't know where they went, um, but by all accounts they, they, they left the, uh, the French council, as it were. Um, perhaps the surprise to me of the week was the comeback of the Americans. So they were down to like five or six ports. It was something horrid. They managed to push the pirates out um, all the way out of Florida. Uh, I don't believe they play, paid the many millions in gold. Um, unless some sort of secret we, we don't deal with terrorist type deal took place. Um, but I'm not quite convinced that's the case. I think the pirates were busy elsewhere, as the map tells us. So the Americans have managed to take back a fair wad of the Florida coast. And it's the Spanish they're up against here. But the Spanish and the pirates, um, yes, they might have lost 12 or 15 ports down here. Um, but they made hay elsewhere. Danes, the only advance I saw the Danes make was into Arves. Now, Arves changed hands more frequently than my ex-girlfriend. I think this was at least three colours, if not four colours, uh, last week. Obviously slowed down once the midweek port patch came in. Uh, but Arves has been a real uh, swapperoo. Um, the Brits snaffled up a couple of ports... Uh, across the south of Haiti here, but 
Um, the Danes are very quiet. Uh, they used to be the marauders. Uh, they seem to be become very quiet. Um, if we look at the Spanish and the pirates, so uh, remember that we've got the uh, newly emboldened pirates with a very active Brit clan joining them, uh, and the Spanish uh, working hand in hand or hand in throat with the pirates. Um, so the Spanish pushed into the Yucatan. The British somewhat disappointedly uh, really showed no resilience at all, and, and in almost a sort of sort of Russian versus Bonaparte attempt. So they sort of tried to retreat quicker than I feel as though their enemies could advance. Uh, I'm not convinced any of these ports were contested, and even the poor old Swedes lost their holiday spot. Now this area down here. Uh, a lot of Brits historically used to do their fleeting and their AI play down in this space. This is where the German uh, Brit clans lived. I don't know if they're still ac uh, active or if they've decamped. Um, but the Dutch could have new neighbours before we get to Letter of the King 11. Looking at this utter onslaught that we're facing here now. There's lots of reasons for it. Uh, I have to say the, the wind has been taken out of the sails. In fact, at the end of the week there, the Brits also lost uh, a good chunk of South, pardon me, South uh, Cuba uh, as the pirates pushed them all the way uh, out and out of Portillo. And this opens up all of North Jamaica for trouble at mill time. Um, there's a couple of ports they're clinging on to here. Um, this one's very pesky. It's the stupidest shallows in the world. I spent a good bloody 20 minutes trying to navigate those shallows the first time I left from Portillo to get around to, I think it's, uh, I can't remember, Santa Iago. I can't remember Santa Cruz, perhaps. Um, yeah, Santa Cruz. Stupidest shallows in the game around here. But anyway, um, there's two islands on the map there. They're not on the map. They're stuck on the bottom of your sodden boat as you try and come round the, the Horn of Portillo, as I believe it's known to the locals. So the Brits have really been cowed this week. Now, there's a few reasons for that. I think the loss of a big clan up here. The clan that was defending these ports is the clan that's predominantly taken them. I think that's mostly empty, empty house taking, to be honest. Uh, it's also been a bit of a perfect storm this week. We've had um, Overwatch, Total War, Doom all come out and Stellaris quite recently come out at the same time as there's been a lot of jiggling around with game mechanics in naval action. Um, I've noticed a bit of a drop off in, in, in numbers at core times, a thinning if you like. We still reach reasonable peaks, but around those peaks there's a lot sort of uh, lower number on. In fact, for a good period of my play, my ping is higher than the bloody player base, which is a bit of a worry. Uh, now, that's partly because I live in Australia and my ping is rubbish, but it probably shouldn't be higher than the player base. Um, so what's going to happen next week? Well, I'm hoping maybe with the US holidays over and um, maybe winter settling in in the Southern Hemisphere and, you know, summer in the Northern Hemisphere, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll and people will be, they will have played a bit of Total War and a bit of Doom and a bit of Overwatch and they'll be sneaking back for a little tickle upon the seas with naval action. So where will the Biffo be? Well, I still think maintain. Um, this is where the best Biffo is at the moment. Um, fighting over these islands across the Antilles. I think that's where probably the most contested port battles are. Uh, the islands will be interesting. Uh, the Brits like these islands, so I suspect they'll be going to and fro. But they're struggling because the Spanish or the Pirates are screening and coordinating with each other, and I think they just have more active players uh, in organised clans uh, available to them at the moment than the somewhat cowed Brits. Um, I think this whole area is going to go, and I think it will go quickly. I can't see any of this being defended. Um, and then really, 
that only leaves the Spanish and the Pirates, well, one direction to go, I suppose. Uh, the Pirates could push back against the Americans, who I don't believe paid the bounty, unless, as I said, it's some sort of secret in the ground floor of a garage, dodgy payment we're all unaware of, um, or at least I'm unaware of. Um, will the Pirates come back to Jamaica? Oh, my lordy. Um, will they go and take out uh, the rest of Haiti, or at least the red-held Haiti? Uh, they're looking for PvP. At the moment, the Brits aren't bringing it. Um, there's very little to be had in this area of the, uh, of the world. The Dutch must be going, hang on a minute, that was our safe border. What's going on there then? The Danes very quiet. Um... I think the player base there might have just dipped below what's necessary for sort of organised warfare. Uh, the French are in trouble. Uh, the Swedes have certainly got their go. The Dutch a bit quieter this week than in previous times, but they're still... Uh, I think they lost a couple of ports effectively to the French. Um, but given that the French are getting pushed so hard from the north... So if we have a little look at the tally of Splinter's Sail and Blood, look at the pirates, crazy. 120 ports. Now I have heard on the um, grapevine, uh, not backed up, by personally cited information, that the devs are going to do the pirate nation sometime, perhaps not the next patch, but the patch afterwards, that the devs themselves haven't settled on what pirate play should be. Should they be limited to fifth rates? Um, you didn't see many pirates running around in constitutions or uh, Ingermanland class ships. Um, certainly not after the 17th century, uh, the end of the 17th century. Um, in fact, the biggest, the biggest pirate of the time period we're in was actually a Chinese lady. Uh, who was the prostitute wife of a Chinese pirate. He passed away, and by the end of her reign, she controlled 1,500 ships, which was actually more than the British Navy. So there's a story there worth chasing up. In the end, she took a amnesty and lived to the ripe old age of uh, 69 or 70. Um, but really in the age that this game's based around 1780 1820 sort of period um there weren't many if any pirates running around in anything with 40 to 50 guns on it uh, blackbeard was long over the, the sort of golden age of piracy was a good 150 years before that uh, 100 years before that anyway around the sort of 1630 to 1680 period um Pirates holding 120 ports. Sort of doesn't feel right that the, the thieves hold more land than the landowners. Uh, but at the same time, if they make it historical, uh, which would be hysterical, um, I think they'd alienate probably the most active part of their player base. Um, there's not many pirates. There's a few who love running around in their fifth rates and sort of slooping it up, as it were. But I think if you took the Santis and the Victories off the Pirates, they'd be grumpy monkeys. So it's a difficult one for the devs. If they go historic, um, they could well alienate what is currently the largest component of their player base. If they don't go historic, well, Pirates are a nation with perks. So that's going to be interesting. The Spanish, who have bedded the pirates are doing very well out of it and they've uh, got 52 ports now which is about the best they've been um the dutch who had been doing very well they lost a couple of ports pretty much because the french got the squeeze um uh, from the swedes in the antilles and managed to push down the brits have collapsed into a screaming blubbering heap um so they lost two th a third of their ports more than a third of their ports two fifths of their ports um, and the Brits were 90 ports only three or four weeks ago, so they've really capitulated. The Danes, I think, are having a kip. Uh, they've lost a couple. Uh, the Swedes, uh, they've only gained one port, but given the pirates took their holiday homes off the British, 
Um, they've actually made five or six ports in the Antilles. Uh, oh, I've got my logos the wrong way around. Uh, that's because I didn't expect the Americans to rise off the bottom. Look at that. So the Americans, uh, they're up to 18 ports now, which is plus 12. So that's fantastic. Well done. And uh, the French, sadly, uh, are at their worst I've seen for a while. They're down to 11. So that should be plus 12 for the Americans. They were six and now they're 18. Uh, so I'll, I'll sack the editor. I'll, I'll beat one of the scribes, teach them a lesson. Um, and yeah, I think the French might be a bit of a, a player base quandary at the moment. So that's it for Letter to the King. Uh, I'm a bit short on some of the uh, intel. A few of the guys who used to give me the intel have um, um, given it a break for a while. So. Um, I'd be happy to hear someone uh, get someone from the Dutch filling me in on what's going on and the Swedes. Uh, that'd be handy. So I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of A Letter to the King. Give us a like. Give us a sub. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how we go with some of these patch changes that are coming up with the bigger port battles. I'm hoping our player base will beef itself up a bit in uh, the next couple of weeks. It's been a bit dribbly this week. And I will uh, hopefully be back next week with a, a bit more of a, a vibrant report on what's going on. So I will see you on the oceans and I will catch you.